All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lydia Gibson, and this is cohort nine of the R for Data Science Book Club. Um, this is actually our, we'll be doing our last chapter today, which is chapter 29, Porto Formats. And our learning objective is to give a brief overview of some options for communicating your results with Cordo from static and interactive documents to presentations, to websites and books. Okay. okay. So, and last, last week we discussed Cordo in general. Um, as you recall, it's a open source scientific and technical publishing system. Um, we, we specifically spoke mostly about like HTML documents, but we wanna talk about like other formats. So there's two ways to set the output of a document. You could either like modify the YAML or call Porto, Porto render by hand. And I'll show an example of that. So, all right. So this is the notes for the book, like the notes we're rendering. And this is chapter, this is, Chapter 29, it's what I'm showing you on the other window, like what I'm showing you on um, the browser. So I made a copy of that. Um, I made a copy of the RMD file and I'm gonna switch it so it's a QMD. Or actually, wait, let me just open it so you can see. It's the same, it's that same document but I'm going to rename it so that it's a QMD. If I remember which one is renaming. Okay. Okay. So I'm renaming it 29 Porto formats uh, dot QMD. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add this header to it. Oops. And it's a YAML, so you need it to be inside of those three dashes. And then we're going to knit it so that it is, um, or render it to an HTML Quarto document. Hopefully, oh, I only saved it, not rendered it. Okay, <laughs> now we're gonna render it. And it will be called diamond sizes, even though it's not. <laughs> yeah, so we have this, and it's basically like the notes we have, which are in PDF, they're in presentation format, but here we have it as like an HTML document. Um, we could also render it to like a Word document, a docx or a PDF. And we could do that by putting that. So it's Porto, Porto, Porto render. Um, I renamed it. Okay. Okay. And then this should render it as both the Word document. It did not. This worked for me before. Oh. No. Okay, it's not working for me right now, but I did that earlier with this. I think you have a that. you probably have to put a space in so quarto formats dot 
So is that the is that the one that you want to render? Twenty nine dash quarto underscore formats. Yeah. Ah, okay. No yeah, valid. Um, it's weird. I tried this out earlier to make sure it worked. Okay, let me let me do it with this one then. Let's see if this one works. Okay, that's wild. It worked before. But either way, when you put that command in. Is... directory is different. The working directory. Hmm. I'm not good at this. Like... Potato, yeah, you have to go to desktop book club examples. Yeah. And re remove the extra quotation mark after Gibson. Oh, things never work out how you want them to when you just. <laughs> oh God, thank you. <laughs> okay, let's see if it works now. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So now, yeah, so now it's outputted the doc, that's the word document. Yeah, so we have 29 quarto format that's titled diamond sizes for some reason. <laughs> so yeah, so here we got the Word document version of it. And then also, I think it's still rendering the PDF, but when I did the PDF of the other, the other one, you also get like a PDF version of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks for indulging me in that. Did not expect it to take that long. Okay. So yeah, so that's two ways you can um, render output. Um, modifying the YAML. So also I could have just changed it here. I could have did this and did it as like PDF. Well, let me delete the PDF first. Okay, so I deleted the PDF that was already there and I'm rendering it. I should have done the docx, the PDF took longer. Oh, there, I just saw it. It's still rendering. Okay. There we have the PDF format, opens up in the browser, but yeah. Okay. Okay, so we did those, the two ways to render the output. Um, and yeah, also, yeah, so note that in this code, you can produce multiple types of output since output format argument can take a list. So it's quarto render name of the document or name of the file. Um, and then output format is equal to and this we concatenated docx and PDF. You could have also just put output, output format is equal to docx or PDF, but here I wanted to show how to do two of them at the same time.
Okay, and then output options, you can find the complete list of Quarto output formats at this website. Um, I could just go through it really quick. So the, like in the Quarto website document mentions all sorts of formats. You have documents, presentations, markdown, wikis, a whole bunch of other formats as well. And so many of the outputs share um, share or many of the formats share output options, but others have options that are format specific. Um, for example, you can have the table of contents um, on like numerous type of documents, PDF, Word doc, or website. But when it comes to like something like cold building, you can only have that like on an HTML doc or like something that's like online, like on a browser, like if you did a reveal JS presentation. And to render all formats specified in the YAML of a document, you can use output format is equal to all. And there's part of the, um, actually, it makes more sense when you look at this. So basically, if you had a YAML that looks like this, where the format is specified HTML, PDF, and docx, instead of like putting, instead of specifying, okay, you only want to render the docx and the PDF, you could put output format is equal to all. And it would render all of these that are specified in the YAML. So there are several basic vari variations off of the HTML for generating different types of documents. And to name a few examples, there's PDF to make PDFs with LaTeX. There's DocX that'll make Word documents, Microsoft Word documents. Um, GSM for GitHub flavored markdown or .md documents and IPI, IPI MD for Jupyter Notebooks. Um, and then, yeah, so this would be an example of like a YAML that you want to have an HTML document that has a table of contents and you want to make the table of contents floating. But for your PDF and your docx, you don't want any special formatting. So yeah, um, again, you can use that special syntax if you don't want to override any of the default options. So for example, this PDF would not have a table of contents. Okay, so presentations. When using Quarto to produce presentations, you get less visual less visual control than with a tool like PowerPoint, but the upside is you can automatically insert the results of your R code into your presentation. And presentations work by dividing your content into slides with a new slide beginning at each second um, second level header, which is denoted by the two hash marks. And your first level headers, which are denoted by one hash mark, indicate the beginning of a new section with the section title slide. Um, and Quarto supports a, var a variety of presentation formats, including Reveal.js, PPTX, and Beamer, where Reveal.js is HTML um, presentation with Reveal.js. I think that's something having to do with JavaScript. PPTX are PowerPoint presentations, and Beamers are PDF presentations with the tech Beamer. And you could read more about creating presentations with Quarto at the Quarto uh, website. And then interactivity. So HTML documents created with Quarto can contain interactive components. Um, and two example options for including interactivity in your Quarto documents are HTML widgets and Shiny. Um, and actually, I just thought of something from the previous one. With regards to presentations, so like our book club, we use, so we're using our markdown for our dope, but it's pretty interchangeable with QMD files. Um, like I kind of showed before, you can just change the change the name from it being RMD to QMD. So yeah, so this is our first level header where you have that one hash mark and then our second level header, which are the two, and that sets each of the, like each of the new slides. So we'll have a slide set, setting output type, doc, output options, document presentations. And that kind of follows what I have here. Um, so yeah, interactivity. 
Um, yeah, so two example options for including interactivity in your Quarto documents are HTML widgets and Shiny. So HTML widgets are R functions that produce HTML visualizations. And Shiny is a package that allows you to create interactivity using R code. So HTML widgets provide client-side interactivity, meaning all the interactivity happens in the browser independently of R. And you don't need to know anything about HTML or JavaScript to use them because all the details are wrapped inside the package. And there are many packages that provide HTML widgets, including leaflet for interactive maps, digraphs for interactive time series visualizations, DT for interactive tables, 3JS for interactive 3D plots, diagrammar for diagrams like flowcharts or simple node-like diagrams. And again, you can learn more about HTML widgets and a complete list of packages that provide them by visiting https. Um, colon backslash backslash www.htmlwidgets.org. Okay. And like in the book, they actually showed you one of the HTML widgets. This is like a leaflet. Um, this is like an interactive map use uh, made using the leaflet package. And all this interactivity is like they're saying it's client side. So it's Stuff that's we're manipulating it in the browser. Um, let's see what else. Okay, and Shiny. So Shiny interactions occur on the server side, meaning you can write interactive apps without knowing JavaScript, but you need a server to run them on. Um, and to call Shiny code from a Quarto document, you add server colon Shiny to your YAML header. And then you use the input function to add interactive components to your document. And you'll also need a code chunk with the chunk option context server, which contains the code that needs to run a Shiny server. So um, you can see an example going to like the Quarto, the Quarto gallery. And now, uh, actually, let me go. You can press interactive doc. And then one of them is Shiny Flood Framework for R. You can click this. So this is an example of a Shiny um, shiny app running in a um, Quarto document. And here's the code for it, where it's title, Diamonds Explorer, the format, it's HTML. And again, where we have to have server is Shiny. And then they have the so you have the context setup, and then there was the context server. One of the things that you need to have, um, let's see, yeah, context server, which contains the code you need to run your Shiny. Uh, yeah, so for this one, we're setting up this ggplot. Um, our output ends up being like a ggplot. And yeah, okay. Okay, um, so websites and books. So with a bit of additional infrastructure, you can use Quarto to generate a complete website or book. And you just have to put a, your .qmd files in a single directory and index.qmd will become the homepage. And you add a YAML file named um, underscore Quarto.yml that provides the navigation for the site. And in this file, set the product type to either book or website. Um, so yeah, just to be example, this if you had project type is equal to book, you would get a book. Or if you put type is equal to a website, you get a website. And again, you could read more about quarter websites and books at the quarter website. And just a note, this this book that we're reading, like the R for Data Science book is in itself a quarto, um, it's a quarto um, book. So if you go to like the GitHub for it, ah, I don't wanna work the repository. Okay, so yeah, so this is like the actual code that renders the book we're reading. 
And then again, we need the portal.yaml. And here we have the project type is a book. And the book title are for data science, second edition. And then, yeah, you'll see it has this index.tmd, which is going to be our homepage for it. And then if you look to find the index.tmd file, this basically has all the information that you'll see when you go when you go to the home page of the book. So it has the welcome, mentions all that. So let me just go back and go to the book to show you. Yeah. So even the book we're reading is in itself is a quarter document or a quarter book rather. Okay, and same with the Cordo website. The Cordo website is like made with Cordo. So you could, so actually you could even potentially download this code and render the book for yourself, not, not even having it like um, looking at it on the web kind of thing. Okay. And then other formats. So Cordo offers even more output formats for example, you can write journal articles using Quarto journal templates, and you can output Quarto documents to Jupyter Notebooks with format equal to IPYMB. Um, for more information about it, again, just check out the Quarto website references, and then you could see, um, you could go on the website for a list of even more formats. And the last thing I have is some resources. Um, in, in case folks aren't aware of it. So there's also Quarto Pub. It allows you to create documents, websites, presentations, books, and blogs in Quarto. And then you can securely publish them to the web with the Quarto CLI, that the easiest way to publish and share on the web. So this is, oh, that's my Quarto Pub. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's, it won't let me go to the regular page. Okay, so yeah, you can, that's a, a way to like publish your Quarto documents. Then there's also like a curated list of Quarto talks, tools and examples and articles that you can find on GitHub. It's awesome Quarto and it's curated by this person. I'm Michael Knolly. I I'm not saying the name right, but thankfully he's curated this list for us with the help of many people making uh, pull requests to add um, more speech, more content. So yeah, so the contents of it um, is kind of has like um, a way you can navigate to kind of hone in on what whatever you're looking for. So that's a good resource to learn more about Porto. Um, and then yeah, also you have the Porto website, which we've been looking at a bit. And then, yeah, from the Quarto website, an overview, things help you get started, guides, extensions, references, a gallery, and a blog, and help as well. And also, you could even like look at the the code that they use to like create Quarto <laughs> and stuff like that. So there's this so github.com slash Quarto dash dev. Okay, so that is all the content I have for today. Um, does anyone have any questions? Okay, well, if not, thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, and yeah, thanks for tuning in to cohort nine of the R for Data Science Book Club. <laughs>